Hey guys, this is a system update and not necessarily a build log. For some reason, uh, last night I put the computer to bed, like I normally do, you know, turn it off, tuck it in, and the next day I decided to turn it on, and when I turned it on, everything fired up like normal, except the code on the motherboard says zero zero, and that's not good. That's really not good. So far I've tried uh, taking the RAM out, switching slots, trying different slots, and that doesn't seem to do anything. So, either the motherboard's got something wrong with it, or the CPU is fried. Now, I don't know why the CPU be fried, it hasn't been overheating, it's been running great. Uh, I obviously have it overvolted for the overclock, it's running at 4.5 gigahertz, but I'm overvolted at 1.3 volts. So it's a little higher than normal, but it should be able to handle it. I don't know if I fried it. It's just weird because it was working perfect when I put it to bed, shut it off the night before, turn it on today, screwed. And I have a feeling that it's the CPU. It sucks that I would have to replace the CPU and get a new one because this CPU is older. It won't have any more warranty because it's over a year. And so I'd have to buy a CPU for it. And I don't really want to spend any more money on it. All right, so I've tried clearing the CMOS. I've tried a different power to the eight pin power that powers the CPU. I unplugged the 24 pin power, replugged it just in case it needed to be seated. And I took all the RAM out. I tried one slot one by one, still nothing. And now when I still turn it on without any RAM in it, it still says zero zero. So if there was no RAM, the motherboard should probably give some kind of a code saying there's no RAM. So that leads me to believe that it's probably the motherboard that's screwed. So that's almost better than the CPU being screwed because it costs way more. So I might go get a motherboard and try that. All right, so I got the motherboard out. I drained the system. I didn't film it because it's kind of boring and messy, so it's not worth it. Got the motherboard out. It's got to take the block off this and get the processor out of it. And then, yep. I bought another motherboard, so this is going to be the cheapest way to test it. Unfortunately, it's a $300 test, but it's still cheaper than buying a new processor, which is over 500 bucks. And this will still tell me whether I have a blown motherboard or a blown 5820K. So, going to get the processor out, drop it in this, and we'll just test it outside of the case because I'm not going to put it in. All right, so it's the next day, I got some sleep, and the system's been running, well, the, the water cooling system has been running for about 10 hours. Um, getting the air out of it, I just topped up the reservoir a bit higher. I uh, plugged in the wires to the motherboard, the video card, and in the, in the bottom here. And uh, yeah, so I guess I can start doing cable management again and get the power supply back in it. And hopefully, fingers crossed, everything is good to go again. So yeah, the system's finally cable managed and everything's hooked back up. And all I have to do is hook up the last fan over top of the reservoir, but I want to let it run for a bit and get more air out of it before I put the uh, top on the reservoir. And then I can put the fan in over top of that. 
And so, yeah, everything seems to be working. I, I did a test boot, it still works, so that's, that's a good sign. Unfortunately, we had to scrap the other motherboard, so... I guess that's the first motherboard I've ever had fail on me, and I guess it's possible that it can happen. Anyway, thanks for watching, see you in the next one.